when we're trying to find fish, it's very important for us to understand a concept called strike zones. This is the distance that a fish will move when we're trying to make it feed or strike a lure. If you understand the size of a fish's strike zone, you'll be able to determine what type of presentation and whether you'll need to use bait or lures when trying to catch fish, no matter if you're fishing in a river or stream, a warm water lake or cold water lake. How do you determine the size of a strike zone? Actually, it's very simple. If you're using a fast moving lure and you catch fish on them, it means that the strike zone is quite large and that the fish are active. So they'll move quite a distance to strike at a lure. Good example is casting a spoon that travels very quickly. If fish smash those, it means that they have a very large strike zone and they're moving, searching for food and feeding. On the other hand, if you're using a fast moving lure and you're not getting any hits, it means that those fish maybe are interested, but they're not aggressive enough to follow and strike those lures, so you won't get hits. So you have to go to a slower presentation. Normally, if you go to a slower presentation, it means that a fish has a smaller strike zone, that he won't move as far. That's one of the reasons why vertical jigging, especially in the wintertime, works so well to catch fish. Because as most people realize, fish are controlled by water temperature. They're cold-blooded animals. And in the wintertime, the water is the coldest. Therefore, the fish's metabolism is the slowest. In some cases, certain fish will only use certain senses when they're actually going to be looking for food. In this case, we have a northern pike that's relying on its sense of vision, and that will determine the size of its strike zone. So a northern pike has its eyes located on top of its head and at the front part of its head. Therefore, the lure sometimes needs to be right in front of it for it to attack it. And in this case, it's right in front. The pike lunges for it when it sees it visually and inhales it. Fish that rely heavily on vision when it comes to feeding will blank out all their other senses and they'll be stimulated by the action and the flash of a lure. Here we're casting and retrieving a Lucky Strike canoe spoon. And you can see that when the lure is tracking, the pike lunges out at it. Even though it misses it, it doesn't leave because it's so stimulated visually. So in this case, instead of a stop and go retrieve, it would be better if the lure was continuously retrieved. Sooner or later, that pike is going to hit. Another good example of a fish that might rely on only one sense to determine its strike zone is a catfish relying on the sense of smell. So here we have a channel cat who's swimming along the bottom and we're using a plastic worm for bait. It swims around trying to brush its barbells into the food that it thinks it wants to eat. So this fish has a very small strike zone. That's why it's important when you're fishing for catfish to use something that smells strong along the bottom that a catfish can detect and pick up. Another good example to understand a strike zone that's related to a specific sense is the sense of hearing and vibration. Here we're using a plastic worm with an action tail and we have a bass that's attracted by the vibration and sounds that that worm is making. In some cases, it might shut off its other senses like its vision or smell because it's so stimulated by the vibrations and what it hears, the sounds that the lure is making. This is especially true when you're fishing for fish that are in discolored water where they can't see very well and they can't necessarily smell very well, but they can hear and feel vibration extremely well. Even pike that traditionally strike at lures because of how they look can rely in murky water on the sense of hearing and vibrations. So you can see here the lure is sending out vibrations and the arrows point to the lateral line that picks up the vibrations. And of course, the pike strike zone is right in front of it and it nails the lure. A fish will have the largest strike zone when it's cruising open water and searching for food. Here's a good example of a pike, senses a crankbait, smashes it. When fish are in the weeds, they can have the smallest strike zone because they can't see or feel vibrations very well because the weeds tend to cushion it out. So in many cases, anglers have to fish in the pockets and drop their lures very close to fish before they can get it to strike. Here's an example of a bass that's cruising, searching for food. To get this bass to strike, its strike zone can be very small. That's why bass fishermen will often time doodle dunk or cast lures very short distances, covering the water very efficiently. Just to show you how inactive a fish can be, here we have a bass that's laying in the weeds. The minnow literally had to go to the bass for us to take it because that bass wasn't going to move out. It's not actively moving or searching for food. This is where people that want to catch fish that are inactive have to be extremely patient and fish very slowly.
Even bass that are holding in heavier weeds can have a larger strike zone. In this situation here, we're using a minnow, and if you look in the background, you'll see that there's a large mouth that's definitely interested in feeding, and it's slowly coming out of the weeds. So it's moving anywhere from one to three feet, and it's feeding. It's not a cruising fish, but it is a fish that's got a larger strike zone. So it came out to hit the bait fish. If that fish was inactive, we would have had to put the bait fish literally in front of it for it to strike. When fish have a small strike zone, sometimes it really helps to downsize the gear and the presentation and technique that we're using. In this case, we've gone to an eighth ounce jig head and a very small foxy jig. And instead of jigging it horizontally around the bottom, you can see that we're lifting it up and down, so it's a very vertical action. This means that it, the lure is working, but it's not going very fast or covering a lot of ground. We wanna keep it in the strike zone. If there are fish in this area, let's say a rock pile, or other bottom structure. So here we have a bass that's interested. This looks like a good sized fish. It definitely sees the lure. It's not moving in very quickly, but it's attracted to it. So it still isn't in the fish's strike zone. So now the fish is coming in, boom, in the strike zone. So if the fishing is slow and the fish have a small strike zone, try going with a slower presentation and a smaller jig. In this example, again, we have a largemouth bass that's quite inactive. It has a small strike zone. It's not moving horizontally, but it is curious as to the bait fish that's hovering over its head. So we're dropping down a live bait fish. This bass is so quick that if it was actively feeding, it would have lunged out and inhaled the bait fish immediately, but it isn't very interested. So we have to literally let the bait fish swim around it. And you can see the bass is holding to about a one foot area. So it's going up, moving back down. Think of all the times that you have fished a weed bed quickly and figured there were no fish there. If you would have fished slower, just like we did here, you probably would have got some fish to hit, even though they had a small strike zone. Understanding the size of the strike zone for the fish you're going after is very important, especially if you're river fishing. In this situation, we have some pink salmon that are in very shallow current, and they're waiting to spawn. These fish are not interested in feeding, so their strike zone is very small they will literally move only a few inches to hit a bait or lure. So this is where it's very important to make your presentation right in front of the fish. Here we have larger Chinooks, and in this situation, the water is quite turbid. These fish can be made to strike, but the lure has to come within inches of their head. So the arrows show where the fisherman's drift should be going to get these fish to strike. Now in some cases, when you're dealing with murky water conditions like we are here, it helps to use artificial lures that a fish can detect with the sense of vibration and hearing, especially if there's low light conditions and the water is murky. Artificial lures such as spinners can work extremely well when fish have a small strike zone because of dark water conditions. So here we have a chum salmon that normally would not pick up a spawn sack or skeined eggs, but in our case, it did slam a spinner. In some cases, dark spinners will work better than brightly colored spinners, especially ones that are totally black. The fish don't necessarily see the flash from the spinner, they see the silhouette, and they're stimulated by the vibrations and the sounds that the spinner makes. Again, though, it's very important to cast the spinners so they pass as close to the fish as possible. Sooner or later, a very aggressive salmon will hit that lure. When fish have large strike zones, some of the best lures to use are crankbaits because you can cover a lot of water and they can run to different depths. The colors will normally depend on how clear the water is. This is a crawfish colored crankbait which can be worked along the bottom or fish suspended. When fish are very aggressive, they will come out of nowhere to strike a lure. See the crankbait on the screen, wham! That pike followed it and nailed it. That means that that fish had a very large strike zone and it was very aggressive. That's when you get some of the hardest hits. When fish have small strike zone, it's very important to use a slow presentation and to fish your bait as close to the bottom as possible. When fish are not actively looking for food, they don't normally suspend in mid depths. They normally go to the bottom. So here we have a very classic combination for walleye, especially when they're inactive, a jig and minnow combination. Another good presentation to use is a vertical jig. In this case, we're using a shad grub that can be lifted very slowly and allowed to sink. Jigs are one of the best lures to use when fish have a small strike zone because we can fish it the slowest of all lures. Here is a fish that's actively cruising and has a large strike zone. In this case, this is a char in salt water and it's working a tidal current. 
and it's looking for any organisms such as shrimp and feeding on them. Sometimes even fish that are cruising and looking for food in clear water, if they're around structure, they can have a very small strike zone. Here we have a trout that's cruising all along a rock edge and if lures are cast on either side of the rocks, the trout won't see them or sense them. So they literally have to be retrieved within one or two feet of the fish. This would be the strike zone. This is almost like a trough within the structure. Even when fishing clear water conditions, fish can have very small strike zones. In the case of largemouth bass, here we're fishing a plastic worm and working it in and out of a weed bed. And we're working our way to a weed edge. You can see here that the water is very clear. The only problem that can arise here, the bass may not be on the edges. They may be in the actual pockets inside the weeds. So this is where anglers may have to work the outside of a weed edge first and then go inside and actually look for pockets in the weeds. So this is what a fish eyes view looks like of a large weed bed. We're going through the weeds, we come out the other side and voila, we've got largemouth bass. So to make these fish strike, we would have to drop our plastic worms within a few feet of them. By understanding the size of a fish's strike zone, we can pick the right lures to use and the right presentation to make so that we can get the lures close enough for a fish to strike. The key points to remember when you're trying to understand a fish's strike zone is number one, you have to evaluate the size of it. How do you do that? It's usually by trial and error. You look at the time of day. If it's early morning, the fish will probably be actively looking for food and you can use faster moving lures, casting spoons, spinner baits, using body plugs like crankbaits. If the fish stop hitting, it probably means that their strike zone has gotten smaller. Weather can also affect the size of the strike zone. If we've got rough water conditions and there's less light penetrating into the water, the fishing will probably have to be much slower. If you're fishing murky water conditions, especially river fishing, you know that the strike zone will be small and you'll have to get your presentation very close to the fish. Keep in mind that many fish can rely on only one sense when they're trying to feed or to strike a lure. And that means that the size of the strike zone may be in relationship to that sense. For example, pike, if they're visually looking for food, you'll need to put those lures in front of them so they can see it. The same with catfish that are feeding along the bottom and they're using their barbells to smell the food before they actually grab it. You'll have to fish a dead bait on the bottom and wait for those fish to come by. The size of the lure is also important depending on the size of the strike zone. If a fish has a large strike zone, you can use a large fast moving lure. If a fish has a small strike zone, you'll be better off going with lighter line, a slower lure and a smaller lure.